Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And what a beautiful day it is, right? Yes. Yesterday, oh my gosh, what a great day. And um, you can just feel God's spirit coming down upon us with Pentecost and maybe started a day early yesterday because it was so great. On Pentecost, uh, we celebrate that we've been given an advocate to accompany us. Poured out in wine and fire, water, wine, and bread. And wind was actually the first word, sorry. The Holy Spirit abides in and among us. We give thanks that God speaks to each of us, no matter our origins, <clears throat> our language, or life path. Filled with the spirit of truth, we go out from worship to proclaim the saving power of God's love and the freedom of God's grace with all the world. I'm Beverly Bauman, and I'm your worship leader today, and Pastor Goins will be leading us in uh, worship later on in, in, um, in the service, and uh, Pastor um, is Larry is at the Synod, and um, talk about bad timing to have a Synod <laughs> uh, a meeting on uh, Pentecost. I'm not sure that messed up a lot of churches that were planning on confirmation, but uh, nonetheless, there we that he'll be back next week. Um, and so um, as I greet you, i um, glad to have all of you here today. Are there any visitors that would like to be introduced? It's good to see you all. Um, as we start the summer, it's like starting a new year, you know? And um, we start out with graduates and we've had our Kira graduated a couple weeks ago, and, and yesterday there was a big dance thing, and there's all kinds of things going on, but one of the things that really wowed me today was I was in the parking lot, and Kennedy drove up next to me, and I was just like, wow, how did it happen that she grew up so fast and so beautifully? So um, another blessing. Our, um, so we're going to start with our gathering song, Filled Its Place. Some announcements and things, and um, Judy, do you know if Pastor 
Do you leave announcements for you or? Not so far as I know. Okay. And Slade. Somebody's got a birthday tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, right. Here we go. Um, and, oh, okay, now I'm live. Confirmation is next Sunday. We are going to confirm um, two confirmands, Kyle Conte and um, Evan Weber. Um, we are going to have a celebration dinner after the service. So if you'd like to attend this celebration dinner, and I invite all of you to help support um, our youth, um, I do need an RSVP. We just need to know how much food we need to cook. So if you would let us know as soon as possible. Today is really the deadline, but I will, um, you know, I will still take an RSVP for tomorrow. So um, um, please do RSVP. Thanks. Okay. And Hayden has an announcement to support the good of the youth as well. I have uh, <laughs> I have 10 tickets for the pancake breakfast at Arby's on Saturday. Uh, if you would like to buy one, they're, um, just come to me. Okay. They're and they're $5? Five, 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 yes, $5. And yes. And it's for the Oak Ridge football? Or? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yes. So support our football programs and pancake breakfast and start the Saturday off great with uh, those, and they're $5, great deal. Any other announcements that we have? Okay, we're gonna move along then today. Um, any God in me moments that people would like to share? I agree, April. It's good to see, it's good to be back together after so long of separation and, and yes, to have a full room is really great. I agree. Okay, anyone else? I know we all have those and I think during the week, you know, I had, this is my God and me moment and then Sunday comes and I'm like, huh, what was that thing that was going on? <laughs> but. Um, you know, one of the things that I've seen a lot of is care for other people. And um, I know Janet is taking care of her mother right now. And, um, and that it's such hard work to take care of uh, someone, especially someone you love, and you're seeing them decline. Um, I have several friends that are in that same situation, and whether they're, you know, um, far away or, or close, and, and, you know, being in assisted living right now, it, you know, rules go back and forth of whether you can visit and, and, um, and what you can do for them. So just keeping those caretakers in, in our prayers, I think, is really important because that is um, something that I think that we kind of take for granted, but it is, it's hard. It's hard work, and they need lots of prayers. So um, please join me then as we gather to worship. The Holy One calls our sons and our daughters to prophesy. We come ready to hear the word of God. The Holy One calls our young people to see visions. We come ready to see visions. The Holy One calls our elders to dream dreams. We come ready to dream new dreams. The Spirit of the Holy One is poured upon all flesh. We come ready to be filled with God's Spirit. Holy Father, your Son Jesus promised his disciples that they would not be left alone. Jesus assured them that the Holy Spirit would remain with them, teaching them how to live and reminding them of all he had said. Weeks later, when the day of Pentecost arrived, you poured out your Spirit, giving your disciples the power to speak in many languages and making tongues of flame dance above their heads. 
Today we ask that you pour out your spirit on us, giving us the wisdom and the courage to live in peace as Jesus' followers. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear? each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the, the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then... Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please stand, if you're able, for the reading of the gospel from John chapter 11. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak, say to you, do not, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate.
to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world does. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Here ends the reading. Like to come up and join me? There's safety in numbers. Do you have a pet? What's your pet? A dog. A dog. What's his name? His or her name? Bandit. Hamp squeak. A what? A hamster. A hamster. Do you love your pet? Yes. I remember we had a dog when I was young. His dog was named Brown Pup. Oh, he was a handsome dog, big and strong, and we would play. We'd play hide and seek. Do you do that with Ben? No? Well, Brown Pup would find us, I guess, because of our smell. We were, we were little boys. We were always sweaty and smelly, so he could find us easy. Anyway, so I love Brown Pup the way you love your pets, and I had to take care of him. Do you have to take care of your pet? What do you do to take care of him? Feed him food and Feed, water. Feed him food and water? Yep. Um, same. <laughs> Feed him food and water. But, and also give him energy and play with him. Yep. So there are a lot of different ways <coughs> that we take care of our pets. If we say that we love them, is that enough? Or do we need to show that we love them by taking care of them? Well, that's what Jesus was saying in today's gospel leading. One of the things he was, he was answering one of his disciples and explaining to him who Jesus was, that he was, that he was with God and God was with him. And Jesus says, if you love me, he's saying this to the disciple, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And what he was meaning is, do the things that I'm telling you are the right things to do. Jesus gave us various commandments to say, you know, if you want to show that you love me and you love God, do these things. Do you love Jesus? Do we love Jesus? So as he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And what are some of those commandments? Well, he says that should we love each other, be kind to one another, um, should we forgive each other if we have a disagreement or someone does something to hurt us? Yeah. So. When you come to church and Sunday school and we learn more and more about what Jesus tells us is the way to live, remember, if we want to show our love for him, we want to follow his teachings and keep those commandments. Okay? Let's say a little prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus and for his love for us and our love for him. Help show us the way to keep his commandments and show that love to everyone. In Christ's name, amen. This is now the time that we give back to our Lord and Savior um, in the, with the gifts that we have. And those gifts can be monetary or they can be in our gifts and talents that we have. And uh, we're not asking, 
passing the plate in right now, but we do have a basket over here by the kitchen, and if you would like to deposit your um, offering there, that is good. You can also mail it into the church, or you can um, come by the church during the week and say hello to someone and drop it off then as well. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's rise if you are able, and we're going to sing, I See the Lord. mercy and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we celebrate Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to the church. One of the things that I like about the story of Pentecost is that it includes what scientists like to call observables. That's things you can experience with your senses. They heard a sound like the rush of of a violent wind, and they saw divided tongues of fire that appeared among them. And the story tells us that a tongue rested on each of them. That would have been too dramatic to ignore. Some years ago, I was shown a drawing for a stained glass window depicting Pentecost, and I was really amazed because the artist managed to draw the wind. Uh, that really surprised me. It was lovely, but there was one thing wrong with it. When I looked at the drawing, the flames were down at the disciples' feet, and it looked for all the world to me like they were in hell. So <laughs> I mentioned that, <coughs> and <laughs> that got changed. That got changed, and the resulting uh, window showed the flames over their heads as though the Holy Spirit had settled on the disciples, just like it says in the Bible. Wind and fire are interesting signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The mighty wind is kind of an easy symbol to understand because in Greek the word for wind and breath and spirit are all the same word. Um, and when we receive the Holy Spirit, we 
breathe in or inspire. So we are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Earlier, Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to the entire church. And that breath was magnified many times and became a mighty wind, great enough for all of us throughout the ages to carry on Jesus' mission. But what about those tongues of fire? What do they mean? Martin Luther preached that the cloven and fiery tongues of the Holy Spirit caused the disciples to preach boldly and with a power that they hadn't had before. In this way, he says, the Holy Spirit streams into the heart and makes us new people, people who now love God and gladly do God's will. We might say that the disciples were on fire with the Holy Spirit, eager to share God's message. So I ask you to think about a time when you were so eager to share some sort of good news that you just couldn't wait to tell someone. Maybe you got a good grade or an acceptance letter to a school you wanted to attend or you were engaged to be married or, or a big one, you were going to have a baby. Or maybe you got relief from bad news. You got a negative medical report about the bad thing and that was good news. And now imagine all of that rolled up into one and you have the disciples being on fire to share the good news of Jesus. That's what we all need to be. And that leads us to the third sign of Pentecost, the gift of language. As the disciples preached boldly and with power, members of the large crowd heard their message each in their own language. That gift of the Holy Spirit for people to hear the message in their own language is entirely consistent with the Reformation and the move to put our scripture and our worship services into a language that people understand. Here at Grace, we support this gift of language with our English language programs for people who speak other language and our programs for English speakers in other languages that we don't know. And we do this not only to help people like refugees become employable, but also because doing as Jesus told us to love one another as Jesus loved us is a lot easier if we can speak with each other. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells his disciples that he will ask the Father to send us another advocate, the spirit of truth. Up until now, and still now, Jesus has been our advocate. We know this because he prayed for us and we see what he asked. He asked the Father to take care of us. And now as Jesus is leaving to return to the Father, the Holy Spirit becomes our advocate and stays with us forever. Besides being our advocate, the Holy Spirit becomes our comforter and our guide. The Holy Spirit's our comforter in times of distress. This is how God walks with us through our troubles. When we're troubled and then we feel a sense of peace and consolation, that's the presence of the Holy Spirit being our comforter. And when we're perplexed, the Holy Spirit steers us toward right paths. This guidance is ours for the asking, and sometimes even without asking, because the Holy Spirit is always with us, pointing us toward Christ. These days, the Holy Spirit doesn't seem to come to us as a mighty wind or as tongues of fire. So how do we know that the guidance we receive is genuinely from the Holy Spirit? It's pretty tempting to fool ourselves that God wants what we want. And even if we don't do that, the world offers us plenty of deceptions to lead us astray. The world tells us that we must have more and more wealth, that we need to get payback when someone does something to us, and that we need to believe things even when they're clearly contrary to the evidence. But the spirit of truth guides us away from lies and revenge and putting ourselves first. The spirit of truth points us toward Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. 
And when we're unsure about whether we are guided by the Holy Spirit, we need to ask whether that guidance is true, whether it's leading us to be kind, and most importantly, whether it points us toward Jesus and Jesus' teachings. After the terrible tragedy at Uvalde, Texas, news reports showed an ad that was published by the manufacturer of the weapon that was used to gun down school children and their teachers. The ad showed a young child who looked to be maybe a toddler uh, holding an AR-15 type rifle on his lap. And the ad text said, it quoted Isaiah, bring up a child in the way he shall go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Apparently the owner of, yeah, it's pretty shocking, isn't it? Yeah, apparently the owner of this gun company is convinced somehow that being armed with assault weapons is somehow taught by the Bible. The problem with this approach, apart from the obvious damage that these weapons do, is that it's notoriously easy to cherry pick Bible verses and use them in ways that the authors of the Bible never intended. The classic example is to pair up Matthew 27, 5, which tells us that Judas hanged himself, with Luke 10, 37, where Jesus speaks, speaks about showing mercy and says, go and do likewise. Now, any fair reading of these verses would clearly inform us that Jesus is not telling us to go commit suicide. So while we should mistrust teaching that's contrary to the Bible, the fact that someone can associate a Bible verse with their position doesn't make their position biblical. And I would remind us that even the devil quotes scripture as he did when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness. So a better way to discern our guidance is found in today's gospel reading where Jesus tells his disciples that the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit points us back toward Jesus and Jesus' teachings. That would include Jesus' teaching to turn the other cheek. In fact, I think it's safe to say that Jesus never counseled his followers to find a bigger weapon and ignore the consequences of their use. So on this Pentecost, we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and keep us from error, to turn our eyes toward Jesus and the needs of others, and not toward ourselves and our own desires. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us grow in holiness. As Martin Luther has said, this life is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness. Not health, but healing. Not being, but becoming. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. For which we ask, come to us, Holy Spirit, dwell in our hearts, and inspire our lives. Amen. Of the oceans of the earth.
the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, the sinful world as it is, not, not as I would not have, it. have it, trusting, trusting that, that he will make, make all things right if I surrender to his will, will. that I that may I be may reasonably be happy in his life and, and supremely happy, happy with, with him, him forever, forever in the next. next. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus heals many. as the sign of God's reign, of God uh, come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servants. Drive away all sickness of body and spirit Make whole that which is broken, deliver them from the power of evil, and preserve them in true faith to share in the power of Christ's resurrection and to serve you with all the saints now and evermore. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We'll start our prayer today with a, a very full board over here, and half of it is praise. Isn't that awesome? So um, our prayer concerns begin with uh, Natasha Patchen, and um, I heard from her yesterday. She is um, she's very discouraged. She feels that um, she's gone backwards, that she can't walk as well as she did when she was in the hospital, her hands aren't working as well as they were, and it is going to be a very long road of recovery. However, she is to be coming back to Knoxville this, later this week. So her caseworker is, um, is working right now to get rehab um, help in the home because she can't. Um, they took her back to the doctor with a hospital uh, with a uh, wheelchair bus and this week and um, anyway so lots of prayers for Natasha feeling God's presence our prayers if you can send cards or, or things like that just to lift her spirit some um, I'm sure we could put her address in online or something it is okay great fabulous okay so um, so Natasha needs lots and lots and she's asked for lots and lots of prayer and and has said that that would probably be her last communication because um, she's having a very hard, she's texting, but it's the voice, you know. And even that is getting very, very hard to do with her hands. And this is an artist person. So, um, yeah, just lots and lots of prayers for her and also for Alan, her husband. 
um, you know, to continue to give her the support. And as being a caretaker, as I said earlier in, in, in the service, is a very trying job and you get weary and, um, and it's hard to keep your spirits up. So also for Alan and um, is Andrew living with him too? Yeah, but he is in this area anyway, their son Andrew. So to have um, Natasha lifted up. The Robinsons, uh, Robertson's family, I know last week we had good news that Steve's cancer had been in remission. Um, I don't know anything, did anyone else? Okay. So they're, they're still struggling uh, through those things. And those grieving, uh, it's been another week of um, people uh, losing their life in, um, in senseless ways. And, um, and then for those who have um, illness and other things in that way. Um, the lingals, I did not know. I know Priscilla's had ongoing problems with her back and um, strength and things, but I don't know. They live across the street from me. I had no idea Nelson passed out, so I'm really sorry. Well, no, check it. Yeah. Right. And he's a caretaker. So, you know, again. <laughs> you know, maybe. The Lutherans on that street need to pick it up some, too, and that includes us. Um, I saw this morning on the news the baby formula shortage, of course, is continuing, but Abbott is back online of making um, formula, and Australia is sending a shipment in on Thursday from, um, to the U.S. for, um, for baby formula. Um, for the Senate gathering today, to, for God to be with them, the Holy Spirit guiding them, in um, decisions that they make and um, plans that we will hear about later. Um, Beverly Camden, what a great name. Um, who's that? Oh my, well, we will keep her in our prayers. And uh, Kathy Kelly is a friend of many, many of our, us in um, the congregation. She's done many Bible studies with us and things. Um, her sister, Marianne, passed away um, maybe early January, but, and um, but they're having a memorial service for Marianne next Saturday, and Kathy is just very devastated by the loss, and um, I, so my prayer is for her to feel God's grace and comfort and closure, some closure of some kind there. Her mother is also at um, what used to be Greenfield, Commonwealth now, I guess, and her mother is in decline, great decline too, so um, she's another caretaker. Um, and then our praises, it is a beautiful day, and yesterday, the breeze that just came through, and it was just amazingly great. Um, our graduates, not only our high school graduates, but we also have, how many kids are going to the high school next year from middle school okay we have two anyway and it's three and so that's that's a great adventure and um and it's a big school and lots of people will help you though find your way around and um and a new step and then we have college graduates too i'm sure in our congregation and people that uh, i graduated from oak ridge high school so um, i'm pretty happy about that as well so um um, those things. Um, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and um, we've talked about that quite a lot today, and we will continue next week when, when we celebrate our confirmation of two of our youth. I put grandchildren up here. I'm so blessed to have four. I have two girls, two boys, and yesterday, um, Gabriella, Gabby, or Bella, whichever you 
you call her. Um, she goes by all three, uh, was dancing, and um, it, her spirit was dancing too. And she was in five um, dances and just had a marvelous time. And it was so fun to see her enjoy life. And James and I are leaving um, after this to go to Nashville because Cora, who is will be four, is um, my daughter's daughter. And she'll be dancing at the Grand Ole Opry today in Nashville. So we are driving to Nashville and back to see another dance. So it's a dance we can, we're dancing this weekend. Um, and, um, and then there's also my two boys, Victor, who is uh, Lawrence, and, uh, and he is just the funniest kid ever. And then I got to keep Wyatt since I wasn't working this week. And because the last thing I have done here is Sarah Bauman, and I'll go back to Jeannie in just a moment. But um, Sarah is an awesome mother for Bella as well as Wyatt. And she took Bella to um, the eye doctor, because that's one thing I will never, ever do again. And I, I try to never say never, but she had to have her eyes dilated one time, and it, it would, took like an hour. It was the most horrible experience I've ever had. So Sarah took um, Bella to the doctor, and I kept Wyatt. And then Sarah had um, um, an interview, and she got a job as a school nurse in, at Norwood, so which is a great um, job for a, a mom to be in. And, and as Bella said, what a great fit, because Sarah is such a happy person and all. And, um, and then Jeannie Schneider. Wow. Praise God. Awesome. That is a praise. Thank you. Holy Spirit. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else have anything to add to that? Yes. A praise from my dad. I had mentioned a while ago that this was maybe six months or something ago that he had um, stage three melanoma. He is now cancer free and he has recovered from his major surgery that he had, and he's back on the golf course. He's 86, and he golfs probably three or four days a week, and the other day he shot 82, less than his age, which I think is pretty good. <laughs> and, so, and he's in a golf tournament this weekend with my brother, so he's awesome. back and feeling great again. And good. Thank you, everyone, for all your prayers for that. That's wonderful. And then Mac's friend that we mentioned, he mentioned last week who is also recovering, so he can get back on the golf course, right? So prayers continue there. Anything else? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Dear Lord, be with us and help us to truly hear each other. Give us intentional listening and help us to give those who need us the time to really hear what they are saying. And instead of having our words scrambled let us open our ears and our hearts. Help us to speak the same language and listen with our heart and the Holy Spirit guide us in action. Please tame the tongue that can be so sharp. Please tame us from unforgiveness, lack of understanding, and let them know that we are Christians by our love. Shown in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Through our baptism, we are joined in Christ's body, the church. We, Grace, are children of God, and although we suffer in this fallen world, we are also glorified with him. Amen. Please join me in our confession, if you would stand. Holy Spirit, you know us through and through so much more that we know ourselves. Grant us your insight to reflect on our failings that we may confess them to you. For our times of disobedience to your word and to those whom you place in authority, forgive us. For our acts of prideful behavior, seeking to justify ourselves by minimizing our error, forgive us. For harboring unjustified fears, 
and for and seeking, seeking all, all sorts of ways to find security in things of the world, of the world rather than in seeking your peace, your peace, forgive us. For our prejudicial our spirits, forgive us. For our greed as we selfishly cling to what we have in abundance while our sisters and brothers literally starve, forgive us. Hear the good news in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Arise and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Let me get my stuff together here. Okay. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Be your, name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your will, your be, will done be done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My sending. Through Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to us, to each of us. Although we are all different, with different talents and different gifts. And if you all see my talent somewhere, I'm looking for it. So, um, the new path. Language, we have different language. We have different love languages. And we have different ways of hearing things. Our different culture, our age, our income our families, or our solo living. The Spirit invites us in love and purpose to see God's will done. So on Pentecost, let us rejoice that with all of our differences and our uniqueness, we are still one in the Spirit. Please join us as we sing our last song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. <clears throat> Lord, we lift your name on high. 